Go in the back, in the purple shirt, please. Sir, yes. You. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I do agree with you when you say that uh, the DRC to be not director alone should be uh, assisted for it to recover. But amidst, amid this problem that are pertaining in Congo, uh, right from the administration itself, to police is such a large country, I find the results to be clear and very dear. Uh, what would you see, what would be done to make uh, and to quicken the process of recovery such that even the neighboring countries could see a breakthrough? Because as someone mentioned, some parts of Eastern Congo are already taken over by administration by the uh, foreigners, the entire Hamui, and others like those. Is it very easy for a country like that, like Congo, what is the international community trying to do so as uh, to alleviate such problems of the entire Hamui, which recently uh, were aiding and helping the election to take place in a sovereign country like Congo? Thank you. The evolution in thinking in Central Africa, I think, is quite evident over the last uh, three years or four. I think there's a sense, certainly, at the conference that we all attended in Nairobi over the weekend, um, that countries have increasingly recognized that their own national interests are best served by having a stable Congo with legitimate institutions. So uh, whatever else they may have thought before, that certainly is the uh, current uh, understanding and mindset, I think, of the leadership in those countries. And that is a very positive and significant uh, evolution in, in, in approach and in thinking. Um, the FDLR, uh, there were accusations that they may at some point have gotten involved in uh, in the elections, we're not aware of it. In any case, you have all of the observer mission reports to read. They deal with all kinds of issues such as this, and they came out with all with the same conclusion, that while there were irregularities, and uh, of course I come from a part of the country that's had a few of their own, uh, heading down to Miami shortly, um, and um, the, there, were, there were irregularities, but nothing that anyone would consider approaching systematic fraud. So I think that chapter has been written. Excellent. I'm going to wrap up with these two right here in the front, or the second row, and then with apologies to the rest of you. I hope you can figure out a way to transform your question into one for the other panelists later. Uh, ben Mungachutu from Congo Peace Initiatives. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ambassador. I think you have received several times for the last two years letters written by this organization <coughs> sent through uh, the past. Uh, my question goes back to North Kivu because that's the area that started the two wars in 88 and 96. To be very specific, because Kawaita asked the question that I didn't hear you answering, um, the process in Congo went well, to the exception that 90% of Congolese Tutsis have been in Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi have never been repatriated. As a result of that, you, we only have one member of parliament who has been elected. One of the reasons that there are fightings in Eastern Congo is because many people feel like they have been excluded. What is the CIAC going to do about it? And two, there are allegations that are talking about this political problem that is getting into ethnic problem, especially because between Kinshasa and the North Kivu government, they are inciting to violence, whereby they are trying to divide Hutus and Tutsis. And if you ask very closely, you will find out that those who are fighting are wonderful. Congolese Hutus and Tutsis on one hand, on the side of Laurent Kunda, and on the other hand, uh, with the government uh, brigade that have been uh, processed. 
So would you please elaborate on that issue? Thank you. Ma'am, the last question, please. <laughs> Just uh, the Bakunda as well, because uh, the question will be, uh, we've seen in the BBC show Kagame um, saying that he's the one supporting Kunda in Congo to make trouble. The same thing, because the, the war started in Kivu, and with Kunda there and, and everybody fighting over there, uh, we just want to know what the ambassador will say about uh, uh, Kagame supporting military uh, Kunda to make trouble in Congo. Thanks. Since you promised yours was short, and I hope also may be relevant to the same general topic, we'll throw it in. Um, good morning. Um, I'm Paul Tupadilla, former human rights coordinator of Monique in Goma. Um, my concerns about the fact that Congolese people are not paying the salaries, especially the military. So I don't know if Mr. Camila has said something about it. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Mr. Reverse Horry here. <coughs> um, first of all, I'll take, take the, the lady's question first. Um, relations have have improved significantly in the sub-region of the Great Lakes, and they have been particularly positive throughout the whole electoral campaign and voting period. Uh, and we expect that to continue because of the reason that I mentioned that people see a real interest now in supporting a new Congo, which uh, is characterized by legitimate institutions or elected people representing the people and the and the uh, the ensuing stability that that will, will bring. Um, so I think that all of these questions that we had to wait that didn't, weren't answered during the transition, and, and this is another reason to state, of course, we shouldn't make a confusion between the end of the transition, which ended with the election, with the, I'm sorry, with the inauguration of the president on 6 December, and the end of the tasks of the transition, the work of the transition, which is all laid out in those peace accords, and a good deal of it hasn't been done. The new army doesn't exist yet. Yes, they've trained 15 out of the 18 brigades that they wanted to train. But that goes to the, the, the further question about the salaries. I might just link the two. Uh, they still are not adequately supported by the government or the international community. And we're in a kind of a vicious circle now where the longer they're not supported, the more they engage in human rights violations, and the more difficulty that makes for us to get international support for the troops. Uh, there is in place at present no, no administrative structure that will guarantee the regular payment of salaries and provision of food for the troops, uh, which you can see right away the link between that and some of the violations that we're getting. Uh, they are inadequate, have inadequate uh, ammunition. We do joint military operations with the FARDC. We've been able to get enough money from New York to help them out here and there. So when we do an operation, obviously you have to have ammunition, you have to have food, you have a number of other things, you have the vehicles. So we can do what we can, but 